Hi guys, welcome to another video. We're back at our test station. For those of you who are new to our channel, this is a system we use to stress many of our products. Simple scale with a load cell and we try and break things here. Today we're going to test our polyethylene line, float line. Those of you that have seen the tests previously of us testing these brake strengths, many asked what is the difference between splicing and crimping. So today we're going to test a crimp. This is a 5 mil crimp over a just over 4 mil polyethylene line. I have two. We're going to stress them until they break. Let's see how it goes. Scale is zeroed. And now we're going to apply pressure. These crimps are already used by us for our four millimeter mono line. We use the four millimeter mono line as the inner lines for our foam floats. So far, so good. For the average small float, that'll be adequate. It'll be pulling the float under quite easily by now. No slippage at all, holding very well. That's very good. We're now probably around that of what the crimp on the two millimeter mono shooting line is. I think the brake strain of this is around is 130 plus. We are getting close to that. And there it broke. That's exceptionally good. So I'll do another one just to see where that goes. And uh, what we're basically proving here is this is as close as damage to splast. Let me set the next one up. So that was the first break, no slippage whatsoever. I did leave the tag ends proud to see if they pulled in. Obviously you don't want these proud as in a float line, it'll hook up, but you can cut that and burn it back. This one is set up exactly the same. So this is our second test. Please excuse all the background noises, we are in a working factory. So we went up to close to 130, which is exceptionally good and more than strong enough. Already more than adequate. Oh, that one went a little bit lower, but still plenty good enough. We're going to do a lot more of this testing and we're going to see if uh, this is possibly an option to go forward instead of having to add all the additional cost of labor to splice it. You've now seen the standard test we did with the crimps. I, uh, excuse the background noise, we've got some uh, spear straightening machines running at the moment. I always tweak the crimp tool itself. The previous one was done just a generic off the shelf crimper. We've now modified it bell the ends slightly more and I put grinds into the tool itself to create an undulating almost a serrated internal part of the crimp. So that's what it looks like close up. It creates these styrations. You might see it better on mono. That definitely helps with the inner grip. We've done this on our two mil mono crimps and uh, it increased the holding capacity quite substantially. So, in theory, we should have a higher brake strain. Let's hope. The other one went around 120-ish. No slippage yet. And we're already up to 130 plus. That's very good. So, 
My modified crimp design definitely has a better internal grip ability. I'm just for interest sake going to break this four millimeter mono now. So this mono is a four millimeter mono we use inside a small foam blown float that we have a way of crimping it and the crimp ends up internally so you don't even see it. The main reason is to support it uh, on an insert that protects this zone. Now we're just going to break it and uh, see how high the pressure goes. Yo, already 200 coming up. There we go. Way more than we ever need. Wow, 300. I think I see a little bit of slippage just happening. So it's managing. So yeah, 350 plus 360. Yeah, slipping. There we go. So, way more strength than we need, but uh, you'd always rather have something to be too strong than not strong enough. There you go. Hope you enjoyed that video. Stand by for the next.